This is going to be the fourth and last installment of Towards a Better Atheism. And what I'm going to say here might cheer the atheist, but it's going to tick off, anger, my fellow Christians. And I, that's the way it's going to go, and that's okay with me. The first point I want to make is I'm not trying to convince you to believe in Jesus Christ. Okay? It is salvation. All you do is ever once believe during your lifetime that he paid for your sins. You are forever saved from that moment forward. And a lot of you atheists actually did that when you were kids. So you're saved. You're going to heaven whether you like it or not. You can't undo that moment you first believed in Christ, and you certainly can't undo the 2,000-year-ago payment he made for your sins, and it doesn't matter at all that you don't believe now. Because he did it before you were even born, so you didn't even have a say in the matter. And at some point during your life, yes, you do have a say in the matter, whether you believe in what he did or not. You're either believing in what he did or you're believing in something else. In your case, if you call yourself an atheist, you're believing there's no God at all. The whole thing is like a fairy tale. Okay. Someday you're going to find out it's not a fairy tale. At that point, you will be given another opportunity to believe to be saved if you've never done it before. It might be tomorrow. It might be the next day, it might be years from now, it might even be after you're dead. Because you never lose that opportunity. That's where my fellow Christians are going to, you know, snipe at me. I'm basing this on scripture and if anybody wants, I can prove it. The people who are in hell got visited by Christ, telling them the gospel. They were in hell already when he told them. The King James Version translates that passage as preached to the spirits in prison. If they couldn't still be saved, then why is he talking to them? Why did he go down to hell? And even the Catholics know that because it's part of the Nicene Creed. Okay, so you don't have to believe in Christ ever. I submit that you'll wish you had, but you will always have that opportunity and there will come a day when you absolutely know that the God of the Bible is the real God, it won't, you know, you, you, you won't necessarily like it, but you'll know, without a doubt. So you can go rocking on right now being an atheist. Or you can say, well, you know, I'm going to hedge my bets. I'll believe that Jesus Christ paid for my sins now, and then turn around and go right back to being an atheist. I mean, if you believe, you actually believe. It's not fake. You can't fake God out. But you can go back to being an atheist afterwards. And in fact, and here's the next thing Christians are going to fault me on, 99% of Christians are going to die atheists. The attrition rate in Christianity is very, very high. I don't know a single Christian in my, in my real life who hasn't decided that he doesn't believe in the Bible anymore or believes that it's a load of bunkum, or opts for some kind of religiosity, which is the same thing as not believing at all. I'm dead serious. Christians go only in two directions in this life. They either start to know God, because that was why they wanted to be a Christian in the first place, or they end up being atheists, or, you know, becoming Buddhist, or, you know, Islam, or whatever other fake God you want to talk about. That's how they go. No Christian dies in the middle. I myself am either going to end up an atheist or I'm going to end up really knowing God even better than I know him now. But I've known him all my life, so the chances of my dying as an atheist are pretty slim. It still can happen. And why? Because everybody gets ticked off over this justice question. How can God, a loving God, let this happen to me? 
that's the central issue in the trial between God and Satan. And you know, you don't know the Bible and that's cool. I'm not expecting you to know it. I'm just, I just have a due diligence disclosure that I have to give you. You believe it or not, that's your prerogative. That's what the whole thing's about. Satan himself stopped believing in God, even though he sees him every single day. You can believe somebody exists, but not believe in them. And he's looking at God, and he thinks God is completely wacko, and he's out to beat God because he thinks that God's whole thought process is screwball. And he thinks he can do a better job. That's what this is all about. That's why it's so hard to know if God exists. We're not given like the blimp flying in the air kind of proof because that way we choose based on whether we want to know or not. That's why I had to say in the first Towards a Better Atheism video, if you want to know if God exists, you have to ask the ceiling. That's the only way you're going to know for sure. And you know what? Anything you know for sure, nobody else is going to believe because it's supposed to be individual proof. That's part of the trial. So if you're looking for me to try and convince you to believe in Christ, I'm not going to do that. If you already believed, you're going to heaven whether you like it or not. That's a fact. And you won't believe it's a fact, and that's okay. You'll know it when it happens. And if you haven't ever once believed that Jesus Christ paid for your sins, and that's all you ever have to do, well, you'll have every single day is a new opportunity to do it, and that opportunity never ends, even after your death. And yes, there is a place called hell, and yes, it's real, but I have to ask myself if it's as hot and as bad as everybody says, because if you look at the second half of Luke 16 in the Bible, the guy who's talking to Abraham sure seems to be kind of, you know, comfortable, comfortable enough to try to manipulate Abraham into feeling sorry for him. You know, if you're trying to manipulate somebody else, you're not hurting that much. You're hurting because you're trying to manipulate somebody else. Anybody trying to manipulate you is already hurting. But he can't be hurting so bad that he can't talk. I mean, if it was really a hell of flames like everybody says, then how come this guy can just talk? And of course, you know, you don't believe the Bible is real. I know it's real. So I know that event really happened. So that's why I'm saying what I'm saying to you. Take it or leave it as you choose. In other words, I'm not trying to convince you to believe in the gospel. Because you always have that opportunity, and right now you don't believe God even exists. And you don't even like the Bible idea of God, and I understand that. I empathize with you, actually. This whole story about the Bible in particular is very shocking and upsetting. And I don't know why we Christians won't admit that. So, believe or don't, at any point in time, there is going to come a day when you know absolutely for sure that the God of the Bible is the real God. And you won't like it. Not if you're in hell, you won't like it. But you can get out of hell simply by believing at that time. So, it's up to you how you want to live your life. And that's the ending thing I want to say. Don't make your decisions based on what other people say. Not even me. My, the job of other people is basically to just acquaint you with other ideas. What you make of those ideas is in your own soul, individually. You are a free person. Free to be bad, free to be good, free to believe, free to disbelieve, free to be nasty, free to be whatever you want to be. And that's what I would urge you to do. Be yourself. Unfortunately, too many people become Christians because their brother, their father, their sister, their mother, or somebody with a, you know, a row of white teeth looked good, sounded good, felt good, and so they just agreed with them in order to fit in. And quite frankly, a whole lot of atheists do the same thing. In other words, we humans, we just give in to some idea because it feels good at the time. And we don't think about whether it makes any sense. So then we're rocking along on ideas that are based on hearsay because we like the person who said those ideas. Okay, but hello, it's your own life. 
What do you care if you agree with somebody else? You and I do not need to agree with each other to be friends. You and I don't need to agree with each other in order to be associates. I mean, hell, if we had to agree with each other, then life is no good at all. I don't even agree with me sometimes, and I don't know a Christian who agrees with me. So agreement doesn't matter. Consensus is a stupid criterion for evaluating truth. It doesn't work anywhere. You can't prove a thing true because everybody agrees. Because everybody can be crazy, and frequently are. So believe what you believe because you yourself, in your heart of hearts, have done your homework and you derive the decision you do. Or if you don't feel like it, don't do your homework and believe because you feel like whatever. But be honest to yourself. Whether you're honest to anybody on the outside, well, who cares? And I guess that's kind of the thought that I want to end with. I can be an atheist tomorrow, and if I feel like it, I'm going to. And the chances are real good that every single Christian you think you know today is going to be an atheist before he dies. Because that's how it goes. We all lose faith in Christ. Very few people actually hold and believe in him at the end. They believe in some fake version of him. Or they believe in some other religion. Or some, or they just don't believe at all. So, that's, you know, how humanity basically is gone. Since it's Adam. So, do you want to go that way? Well, maybe. But go the way you want to go. Because this whole story is shocking about truth be free. Therefore, you are free. And then my very last comment is going to be this. If you think the idea of God is at all attractive in any flavor, and if furthermore you think the, that there might be some attractiveness to the idea of God in the Bible, except that there are all these questions you have, then look up at the ceiling and say, God, I need proof that you're the God of the Bible and I need to answer all these problems. And you'll get them. Okay, it takes a long time though. It doesn't happen overnight. And frankly, the only reason you should ever want to be a Christian, this is my opinion, okay, is to know God. I can't see any reason to want to even go to heaven if it's not to be with God and to know God. In fact, I can't see any reason to living at all, hell, heaven, anywhere. I just soon kill myself right now if it wasn't for the fact that God exists. He's gorgeous. I'm in love with him, and I think you probably figured that out. So I'm not even pretending to be objective. I'm trying to state the objective facts, but I've already made my decision, which, you know, can change tomorrow. But to me, I can't see any value to being a Christian whatsoever, except to know God. And that's why the Bible exists. It's to know God. Not to be a holy person, or a good person, or to lord it over somebody else, or to sing rah-rah Jesus songs, or to tell yourself how moral you are. Morality is totally irrelevant. You need morality to get up in the morning. This is way beyond that. What's life? Why live? Okay? Why do you get up in the morning? For me... And I can only speak for myself. I don't want to get up in the morning. I really don't. Life has absolutely no meaning to me at all, zero. Ever since I was a little girl. The only reason I get up in the morning is because I want to know God better. And that's what the Bible's for. So that's why I study it so much. And that's why I make so many boring videos about the Bible. Now if that kind of idea is at all interesting to you then it would be worth your while to believe Jesus Christ paid for your sins and to actually get involved in Bible. Use my God System video uh, to figure out what the mechanics are. They're very simple, doesn't cost you any money whatsoever, and you don't have to you know, be in any group. 
and that'll show you what the mechanics are. They're very simple. It's basically use one John one nine, ask God to send you to the right teacher, and then just learn and live on Bible. That's it. You don't have to belong to a particular denomination. You don't have to talk or fellowship with other Christians. It's just about learning God, and everything else is extra. Now, if that idea is attractive to you, then then that would be a reason to believe in Christ. Otherwise, don't do it. 